Folding tripod. Hey, haven't seen you in a while. It's been uh, it's been too long since I've posted a video on this channel. Hang on. I saw something here on the lens. A little bit of dust, va? Now we're talking. Looks very good. Vi bara kolla brillorna, jag vet inte. Maybe need to put it well. Lite romlösa. Ramlösa. As you may or may not know, I recently finished up with my 100th episode on my vlog channel and the 45th daily consecutive vlog, which is a lot more than I thought I would be able to do, but I made it, which is awesome. And during the time that I've been doing these daily vlogs, I've come to realize that there are some specific gear that I always use on a daily basis. And that is one I wanted to share with you because I feel that with the gear that I currently have, I have absolutely no need of buying anything new, which I think is very good because I've never felt that before. Some of you probably have seen what I carry in my camera bag over on my vlog channel, but those of you that don't follow the vlog channel and still want to see camera gear, you have come to the right place. Also want to say, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. And uh, if, oh, joy, joy, looky, looky. Okay, this uh, camera bag is the uh, Low Pro Pro Tracker BP450 AW Mark II. Um, I've been using this camera bag for, I think it's like one and a half year. And the reason I like it so much is because it's square design. A couple of bad things about it though, that this compartment opens up outwards. If you're walking with this on your back and there's someone that really wants to have what you have in your camera bag, there's no stopping them from actually opening it up, grabbing the things, which I think is not a good thing, especially when you consider the amount of money that camera gear costs. But what I do like about it is that it fits everything that I need perfectly. First thing that I want to talk about is this. I have paid for this myself. This is not sponsored. The Peak Design Travel Tripod Carbon Fiber. It is a very, very expensive tripod, but it is also very good. A couple of things that I don't like about it is that when you put your camera on here and then you want to have it sideways, these parts stop you from tilting it up or down. So you only have a specific range of movement when you want to tilt your camera and that is something that is very bad if you're shooting a lot of like vertical video this might hinder you to actually produce the videos that you want to make but other than that the sheer weight of this thing which is close to nothing and the small form factor makes this so worth it even though it costs a lot of money because i've been carrying this daily for the last 45 days and i can say that without this i wouldn't be able to shoot any of the videos that i've done recently it is just highly recommended from my end ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> ah cool sun face right main camera as you can see Helvete. main camera the a7s3 is the way to go when I'm shooting my videos. I'm shooting my time lapses, majority of my talking head. I'm using a Sony A7S III right now. Super satisfied with it. Do not want to upgrade to the A7 IV. Don't want to switch this out. The lens that I'm using as my main lens is the 16-35 f2.8. Initially thought that this was a very, very expensive lens and I actually thought it was too expensive to go for when I started out vlogging, which I still think it is. Because if you're just starting out, there's absolutely no reason to buy this lens. But if you want to have the absolute best image quality possible from a 16-35 lens, then I think that this is the way to go and being able to have the focal range of 16 to 35 allows for so many different creative angles because having the super wide at 16 millimeters especially at full frame makes the time lapses of any kind of environment look very good because the clouds look super epic and then when you want to get a little bit of details you go back up to 35 which i still think is a little bit on the low end because i would love to have like a 16 to 50 that would be such a sweet spot. Moving up in the focal length, 85 millimeter Battis. This has been around for a very long time. And the main reason that I actually bought this was because of Peter McKinnon, because he made a video which he said that the 85 1.8 was the B-roll king. And I tend to agree. It is a very, very good B-roll lens. 
and also a very good photo lens to have in your camera bag at all times. Whenever I'm shooting any detailed shots, this is the lens that I opt in for, and it gives you such a complimentary look when you have the 16 to 35 and then go up to the 85. It feels like the range of these two lenses is more than enough for the majority of the shots that I do on a daily basis. And it's also a great lens to have when you want to take photos of your family and that kind of stuff. I, I think it's great, and I feel absolutely no need going down to 1.4 because even though it looks good, I don't know what to do with the 1.4 because it's too shallow depth of field. Jumping up to the big boy. I bought this, uh, I think it was around a year ago, the 100 to 200, 100, 200, 100, 400 Sigma lens. And uh, I haven't really cleaned it lately. I should probably do that. And this is my go-to lens when it comes to shooting time lapses, when it comes to getting a compressed shot, when it comes to having that reach that you otherwise can't with any other lens than like a super telephoto lens. I really like the size and form factor of this. It fits right in here, doesn't weigh too much, and it is also weather sealed. Sigma does provide you with some image stabilization on this that I use. And when I've been out shooting my daily vlogs, this has helped me so much to get a lot of environmental shots because you can stand in one place and have the ability to go up to 400 means that you can get a couple of different shots from one single spot that you're standing. The microphone that I'm using is actually the microphone that I'm using right now. So you can hear the Im image quality, audio quality. The ECM B1M, still think that is a super bad name, but it is one of the best microphones that I've used. And that is why I have two of them. I always use this. No other microphone here. It is like always on my camera. The only time that I use an external microphone is when I'm doing my podcasts and then I use one of these. The downside with this is that you need to connect it to the hot shoe. So you cannot actually have this anywhere else than in the hot shoe of your camera. So now, never wrong to have dual charger for my A7S III batteries. This is a UPO charger. I've been using this for the last one and a half year. I think it's great. It does what it's supposed to do. But I also noticed uh, when I was <laughs> actually doing my daily vlogs that you can charge other USB devices with this if you have two fully charged batteries. We are closing in the, oh, oh, the DJI RC Pro together with the DJI Mavic 3 Cine is my current drone that I'm using. After using this for a little bit more than two months, I can say that it is a very good drone. The four to five minutes of flight time makes a huge difference because now I can use the same battery for like two or three days if I just do quick like 10 minutes flights, but it also provides you with such a good image from the main camera. Downside with it is that it is big. It is way bigger than the Air 2S. And I do think that the Air 2S is just as good for the money that you pay. And if I had to choose between this and the Air 2S, then it probably would have been the Air 2S because of the form factor of that and the weight, because it way less weight to carry in your camera bag. This has been with me in my camera bag on a daily basis and combined Combined with all the other gear that I got, such as this lens, this camera, and this lens, I honestly don't think that the weight is too bad. The only camera, except for the A7S III that I use, is of course the ZV-1. This is something that I have on my right hip at all times. I think it's very good camera for anyone that wants to have a point and shoot. When it comes to memory cards, I am using CF Express Type A, mainly because they are the only ones that allows me to shoot SNQ mode, 100 FPS in all intra. I also have several SSDs in my camera bag to always make sure that I have some space that I can edit videos on the go with my MacBook. But after using this equipment for the last four to five days straight, there is absolutely nothing else that I feel that I want to have or need to have in my arsenal as a running gun filmmaker or YouTuber. I think that this is great and uh, it's a very good feeling to have. I don't know what you thought about this video, but if you did like it, do give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you're not following me on Instagram, you highly should, highly should do that. How do you formulate yourself, Peter? You should definitely join me there as well. And uh, I do have Twitter, if you didn't know. It's also in the link to, I can't talk. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Really hope that you enjoy this. Have a good one, and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.